Welcome to our video on utilizing the Bulk Document Creator. This is sometimes referred to as the scheduler. The Bulk Document Creator allows staff to define status report schedules on a program area basis. I'm going to start off today by stating that this is an admin function because the administrators are the ones that create the actual forms and set up the funding opportunities. And you have to know what forms and frequency they are set to in order to actually schedule them out. So I'm going to first take you into the funding opportunity and show you. And you can see in this funding opportunity, I have my status reports. I happen to have three forms in here, right? And then over here, I have two types. So these two forms will show up for my quarterly reports. And then I have a third form that's going to show up for a final report. So that's my frequency or those report types and my forms. So for example, if I went in and created a schedule for maybe a monthly status report and ran it on this funding opportunity, the forms wouldn't exist for the grantee to fill out. That's why it's an admin function. You really have to understand the forms, the frequency, and make sure you know where they're all sitting in order to create the schedule. So that's the view of the funding opportunity. Keep in mind that status reports do not need to be scheduled. The way that I'm going to show you today is again in bulk it's the bulk document creator you don't have to use this in order to use the status report module um, if you don't have a specific frequency like quarterly um, you may not actually need to use this bulk document creator to schedule your status reports so i'm actually going to take you into the grant uh, grant underneath this funding opportunity and show you a grant and show you how to how to schedule one individually because what the bulk document creator does is it creates these status reports and the due dates for all the grants underneath the funding opportunity and that may not work for your type of program or for your type of grants so keep in mind you can still use status reports without scheduling them so the next step is the grant just to show you one of the grants um, this particular one does not have any status reports yet so you could have maybe um, an odd frequency where it's not necessarily due for each grantee at the same time. Maybe some grantees don't need to do that specific status report. Um, there are actually three different ways your status reports can be created. One is the grantee needs to come in and create the status report. Um, if you're expecting the grantee to come in and create their status report, the downfall there is it doesn't exist yet. So they would have to know you would maybe set up a compliance item or something like that where the, they're getting these reminders because it, when it doesn't exist, there's no status report sitting out there, that means there's no due date. So there's no way for the system to like remind them of something that doesn't actually exist yet. So again, that would be pretty rare where you would just expect your grantee to know what they're supposed to do and just come in and do it. So what most clients do is they will schedule their status reports for the grantees, but they may not do it in bulk. So if you want to schedule a report for this grantee, it's really good to do so because you can give them a due date and the due date will actually trigger out um, an alert to them on a frequency and keep reminding them that this status report is coming due soon. So you can do it on an individual basis. I'm in one grant right now. I can click add. This would be me as an internal user scheduling an individual status report. All you have to do is fill out the general information. And the most important things here are, and I know it's not required because you don't actually have to require the due date, but if you want those alerts, which will really help you, the system will automatically remind the grantee, that that's the due date. And then it depends on your system if these report dates are required or not, they may not be. But your subtype is important. You know, what type, what type of status report and when is it due? We're going to leave it in editing. We obviously want the grantee to edit it. You would only bypass that status if you're putting in old historical data. It was already moved past editing. But if we're scheduling it, we're expecting them to come in and edit it. So we'll leave that set to the default. We'll choose which type. So I know I only had a final report in quarterly. So I can come in and go final. 
I don't need to title it unless it's required. It depends on your system. Um, some might have these as required fields. I'm going to go ahead and title this and, and put it as a just so we know which one's which. And again, that due date is what's going to help you. So you can come out and say, oh, well, it's due clear in July or something. It happens to have report dates that are required here for me. I'm going to go ahead and, and now I'm actually done. So as soon as I click save, I'm done. I don't go complete the form for them. That's it. And what I did is I just created it. So if I go back into the status report for this grant, now something exists. It's really important to understand that now that it exists, it has a due date. It's going to help remind the grantee they have a status report coming due soon. It's also going to help you if you want to go out and do a search or run a report and know maybe um, who's late. Maybe it's getting close to that due date or it's past that due date. Because it now exists, I can search or report and find this out here. If I didn't do this by either scheduling it individually or scheduling it in bulk for all of the grants under my funding opportunity, then it doesn't actually exist out there, which means you can't report. It, it doesn't exist. It's also not going to send out those alerts. So I really want to stress that you should schedule your reports. You just do not have to use this bulk document creator that I'm going to show you today. However, the bulk document creator is very handy for programs that do have specific frequencies for all other grants. It's just really handy to not have to do this individually. You know, if everybody has a quarterly report, um, for each, you know, each grant, everybody has the four quarterly reports and they're all due on the same due date. Or another example is a report that would be due so many days after the project starts, after, like the actual grant start date. Um, and it's, you know, for every grant under that funding opportunity, the book document creator is very, very handy. So I'm going to go ahead and head there next. I'm going to leave this grant open. We'll actually schedule it. I'm going to run it under this funding opportunity. So the one very, very important note, and this is another reason why it's part of admin training, there is not an undo button. When you run a schedule, you are bulk creating these documents for all grants underneath that funding opportunity. It's highly recommended that you test this first, you test your schedule that you create, maybe in the test program area, or before you've awarded your applications into grant tracking, maybe you just have your test grant awarded, make sure it's correct because you're going to bulk create these status reports. And if you don't set the schedule up correctly, you are manually, individually fixing them. So it's very important to test at first. That's why it's part of admin training and down in utilities. But again, it's very handy. So it's worth, it's worth learning but definitely test it first. So that's where we're going to head next. We're going to go to Utilities, Bulk Document Creator. Okay, so the first example I gave you was a quarterly report that each grantee would have the same due date on. Like everybody has first quarter and it's due on April 15th. So I've already got that one set up just to take a look at, and then we'll set up the second quarter one together and go through each step. So you can reuse your scripts. These, these are all, you might have many scripts in this list. You may have none. Um, it depends on how many you've added for your program or how many somebody else has added. But I have one sitting here for my particular program. So I'm going to look at this, and I could reuse it for next year, too. So I could just change my dates, update my dates, update my report periods, and just keep reusing this. That's what's really handy. And if I look at what I set up, it's set for the training program area. So of course, a status report, and this is where you have to know what funding opportunity you're running it on and in what forms and frequency that funding opportunity has. So we went and verified that we're using quarterly report types. I've got two forms in particular that are set to that type. So I've got a quarterly as my subtype. These subtypes de are determined by um, a drop down in your system of the actual status report types. So you may have different types than what I display today. It depends on your system. Just like before when we individually scheduled it, we want the document to be created in editing status. And then we have some different, um, different options here for our reference date and our reference type. 
and these these um, the reference days and the specific date. I'm actually going to talk about this in further detail when we create it together. But this tells me I want it to be due on a specific date, and that due date is April 15th. So this would be my first quarter report. Okay, so then one time, I want this to be done one time. So if I did quarterly, the downfall is they're all going to have the same report range and that's really not the way to go so so um you could do it that way i have seen some people do it that way but then you're individually um updating this report range it's really better to create four different scripts so you'd have a, a first quarter re report script a second quarter and so on and then the other benefit to that is your grantee won't accidentally click on the wrong one so if i actually did all four at one time, they're going to have four sitting out there, which might seem convenient in the beginning until your grantee comes and clicks on the wrong quarter report and submits it in. So they click on quarter three and it's actually quarter two. They've got too much in their view. So I just personally prefer to set up four different scripts and then I would run them one at a time. I'd wait till after first, first quarter was done there and then go back and run second quarter and so on. That just seems to... Um, work best when I've tried it. Um, you can also see the history down here. This is really important, especially if you have a large program with multiple um, administrators. Make sure somebody else hasn't already ran this. Like you can see, I already ran this, this schedule. And it tells you what funding opportunity, because again, you can reuse schedules. So this might have been last year's funding opportunity, and now you're running it again this year. Make sure you're not rerunning it. It will run it and create them again. And another important note on this kind of same concept here is it's going to hit all grants and in, in awarded and underway, which is good, right? We want to schedule these status reports out for all grants under the funding opportunity. But if you had a couple of stragglers and that are still in the um, review process, and they really, um, you know, you're waiting on maybe corrections or something like that, and you haven't actually awarded them into grant tracking yet. There's still applications. And you're getting on the scheduler and trying to, you know, stay ahead of everything and get these scheduled out, and you run this. That's great. You can do that. It'll go out and create all the status reports for all those grants that currently exist. But then if you award a couple more applications in, and you want to create the status reports for them because they'll come in and they won't have any. The scheduler got ran before they were grants. So they'll, they'll, they'll be blank. They won't actually have the status reports. Those you need to do individually because if you come back and rerun the scheduler, yes, it'll create status reports for those new grants, but it's also going to duplicate all the status reports you already did on your existing grants. So make sure you don't get too ahead on this. Get the majority, if not all of the grants awarded in the grant tracking first. And then you'll come in and you'll run your, your schedule and then it'll create all those um, status reports in bulk, which is again, really handy. You just have to make sure you're prepared and you test it again. That's why it's admin. So this one is first quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and walk through creating second quarter. And that is all based on a specific due date where every grantee, no matter what their project start and end dates are, they would all be expected to have the same reports due on the same day. So that's where I'm starting on a specific date. And that due date is all the same for everybody. I'm going to do another one of these where we'll create it together. And then I'll do a different option where we have a due date that's different for each grantee. That's a little unique for each one. So we're going to go ahead and do the second. And back out of this, that's quarter one. You can always look and see based on the due date. Okay, so I'm going to click add. And here we're going to go which program. I have three programs assigned to me. So I'm going to go training, status report, again, what type. These are all the types that happen to be in this system. But I'm only using quarterly and final, so I need to make sure I know that. So quarterly, they're gonna stay in editing status, right? Until that grantee actually logs in and submits it in. So we're gonna leave that to the default of editing. This is where you have to decide if it's a specific due date or if each due date's going to be unique. 
most of the time, like quarterly, every grantee has the same due date. So second quarter is what we're getting ready to set up. So I'll show you, we're gonna leave that to the start on specific date and then put in our specific date here. So this is saying that all my, all my grants will have status reports for second quarter due at the same due date, July 15th. And again, this is just an example. But this is where every single one has the same exact due date. Again, I'm gonna leave it to frequency of one time. That way my uh, reporting periods can all be unique and I can run the schedules separately. So now I'm gonna just put my reporting range in here for second quarter. And that's all I need to do for that one. I'm gonna click save. You can see it's brand new. I haven't ran that one yet. And then I could keep going. I could make all four of my quarterly, um, quarterly here. And then I'm gonna move on now and do a different type of schedule. Now remember this next example may not apply to everybody, but this is where not every, not every grant has the same due date. Um, an example would be maybe um, maybe a semi-annual or um, a final or something like that, where every every grant has kind of different starting end dates underneath your particular funding opportunity. One might have started, you know, two months after another, and so on, and they're all kind of unique. Um, but they all, you know, have a semi-annual report or um, a final report or or something like that, where you really want to base it off of their start and end date. Um, you can schedule it like 60 days from whatever their start date is or 180 days from whatever their start date is or 30 days from their end date. And that way it can be unique to each grant because each grant will have its start and end, its own start and end dates. Um, I'm gonna go back really quick to the grant one thing, if you're going to use this type of schedule where you're basing it off of their start and end dates, it's very important to know your grants have to have start and end dates. And that may seem a little silly, but if you come in here and do this too quick, you know, you you are scheduling something based off of a start and end date, but you don't have start and end dates in your grant, it can't schedule those. Again, another reason why this is admin training, you have to make sure your grants are set up and ready for this before you come in and run the script. So I'm going to quickly go back to my grant tab here and verify that it has start and end dates. So I'm looking at one grant. Keep in mind, you, you'll have many grants under one funding opportunity. This one grant, if I go back here, look at the general information, it does not have start and end dates. Therefore, if I ran this next schedule on it, it wouldn't create the status reports. And just a helpful tip here, a great way to get start and end dates automatically on your grants when you award them, is if you put them in your funding opportunity, general information. If I would have put dates here, as you can see, it says all grants awarded under this funding opportunity will inherit these dates. That may not apply to you, but even if they have like the same start date, all the grants under this funding opportunity will start on the same day, or even the 80-20 rule where the majority rules, put them in your funding opportunity, then your grants get them automatically. If not, you truly need to come in and, and give each grant, which each grant should have them anyway, but come in and give each grant a start and end date. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick before I do this new schedule. Now I have start and end dates. You would, of course, do this for each of your grants if they don't all have start and end dates. They definitely have to have start and end dates for the bulk document creator to work. Okay, so we're going to go back to creating our script here. We've got two quarters. We would actually end up with four of the quarters. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my next one. And this is this due date is going to be a little bit different. So the biggest difference you'll see is I'll change my reference type. So it's really thinking about the types and the due dates here. So same thing, training, choosing the type, editing status. And here, if we're gonna change this and not do a start on specific date, and we're gonna use days from reference date, then that's where you go, which reference date do you wanna use? Do you wanna use the grant's end date or the grant start date? 
if you do a specific due date, the reference date doesn't matter. So it's only if you select days from reference date, it's going to go, okay, which reference date? And then how many days? This will be created this many days after whatever reference date. So like mine's a final report, I might go 10 days from the project end date. Or I might do 180 days from the start date. It really depends on, on your own needs and your own schedule. But this way, each due date is going to be unique to that grantee. So you can still schedule it in bulk. You don't have to manually do it individually. And they can each get their own date based off of the reference day. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. Again, I'm going to do one time. Okay, and then all I have left is my date range. Um, this is a final report, so it'd probably be based on a year, so I'll put the year in there. And again, this is just an example. might happen to be a final report, but you could do this with any subtype you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And now when I back up, you'll see I have three different scripts. So running these scripts is really easy. It's the easiest part. Running these scripts is really easy. It's the easiest part. Um, but again, test first you know do this in your test program area first make sure you set it up how you need it and that it's working how you need it to and then you can go in and do it for your real program area it is really going to create these status reports and then if if you did it incorrectly or um didn't test properly or something like that then you have to individually fix each status report so avoid all that and just test first Okay, so now I'm going to actually run these. This is the fun part. So we're going to first run the um, quarterly report. So remember, on my grant, I had already individually scheduled that final report. So what will happen is when I run this script to show you, it'll end up creating two final reports. This is exactly what you want to avoid. You want to make sure your grants don't already have status reports. Um, they will duplicate. So you will actually see that when I do this. So I'm first going to run my quarterly. So I'm going to come in to my quarterly, the script I want to run, make sure it's the right due date and everything, and I'm going to click Run. Now, if you do not see your funding opportunity listed here, go back and check the status. You might be testing this. It might be in test status. It's not going to let you run it on a test status um, funding opportunity. In all reality, when you would run a script, your funding opportunity would be closed. You're no longer accepting applications. That process is done. Your review process is done. And you're managing your grants under that closed funding opportunity. So if you're testing this and your funding opportunity is in test, you can still test. Just go put it in closed status really quick, run it, and you can change it right back to test. But make sure your funding opportunity is in closed status. And then we'll select, as you can see, you can select many. So be careful in here and just select the appropriate funding opportunity. And then when you click Execute, it'll pop you back to the script. And you can see now it's been ran three times. It'll tell you the date and time it's, it was ran and by, by who. Now let's go look at our grant. So now you can see we have that quarterly report with the reporting periods and the due date. And again, the important thing is that it has that due date to help remind that grantee and trigger out those alerts that this is coming due soon. So I'll run the second one really quick. Going back here, coming into my second one. Again, I don't recommend doing this all at one time because the grantee will have all of these sitting out there and might click on the wrong one, but I wanna show you what we created here running, execute. It'll now show me the history again. It also shows me how many are created. So this tells me I have four grants out there, at least four that have start and end dates anyway. So it's doing it for four grants. And then I'm going to do it on my final one. Again, this is going to give me a little bit different of a due date. It's going to be 180 days from that date I selected, which was the start date. Okay, so this one's a little bit different. We're going to run it. Again, select the funding opportunity. So running it's the same. 
and it created four. So let's go see what those look like in that grant. And now we have all of them scheduled out there and see how it gave that due date based on the start date for this particular grantee. So it's a really handy tool you can use to schedule out your status reports. That concludes our training on the bulk document creator. Thank you for watching.